Hey guys, I'm um, Dimension Chopper. Today I'll be doing my top 5 Zelda games that should get remakes. Now, with over the years, we have seen some older Zelda games like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, and Twilight Princess all get remakes for different consoles. So, whether that's being Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time being remade for the 3DS, um, Skyward Sword being having an HD remake for the Switch, uh, and, and that sort of thing. And I thought, um, when I look, let me talk about some of the games that haven't been remade, um, feel like like feel like that they should get a remake. So for number five is Zelda Two. Now, out of the other games um, in this list, I feel like this would be the most weird one to have a remake of, mainly because Zelda Two is the most different Zelda game in terms of um, the gameplay mainly because that game is more RPG based than um, the normal hack and slash combat that we have seen in every other Zelda game that we have seen and and and, and it would be kind of weird because like, uh, cause like graphic wise they could do it the same way as let's say um, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake or something like that, also maybe something different. Um, but it would it would be a bit weird to see, you know, the sort of combat game, gameplay wise um, that we have seen in Zelda 2 to be in a sort of 3D aspect. And yeah, um, uh, it'll be something weird, but it'll be something interesting to see as a remake, just to see how differently it will seem yeah, in terms of how it plays combat wise. And yeah, even though it will be a weird game to see re being remade, it will, I think it will, would be a definite interesting one to see how Nintendo goes and tries to remake this, this game. For number four is the original Legend of Zelda game. Now, this is one of the few games I would say that if it is remade, I would say it will probably go the same direction graphic-wise as um, Link's Awakening remake, uh, only because um, the, the graphics in terms of the original Zelda game are really outdated in terms of the ones that we've seen nowadays in terms of Zelda games because like if you look at let's say the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that graphically is so much different from the original Zelda game and or maybe they could do a similar way to graphic wise in terms of Breath of the Wild maybe because they kind of did that in a sort of demo they sort of thing that they did um, back when they were originally developing Breath of the Wild, so maybe they could do it in a, a, a similar graphic wise maybe. Um, but yeah, that would be really fun to see how the original Zelda game uh, would look in with new graphics and a new way to do um, combat and fight enemies, and it would be cool to see old enemies um, that just come just come to life in 3D. Uh, and we kind of got a bit of that, bit of that with like some of the other Zelda games, like um, Ocarina of Time, uh, Breath of the Wild, kind of, um, and also with um, Hyrule Warriors, where one of the bosses from the very first Zelda game came as a boss. I think two of them from the first Zelda game came as a boss in um, Hyrule Warriors. But it would be interesting to see how that sort of thing would um, appear. For number three is the Oracle games. Now, I would say this is the game that would heavily be improved with the Link's Awakening remake graphics because I think they both came on the same uh, console, that being the Game Boy Color, I believe. And it will be cool to see how these games um, doing the whole uh, season time travel mechanic that both games have with seasons. Uh, having you change the different seasons, while well, with ages you going back and forth between the past and the present, and it would be cool to see something like this, like just seeing how like how these two these sprites in the game would become a sort of like you know a sort of three D three D esque kind of two D sort of style in a sense, because like that that kind of has some elements in um, Link's Awakening remake where even though it was a remake of a 2D game, it has some 3D aspects like the models, the characters, the bosses, the enemies, and then it also had the top down um, sort of thing, kind of like how the 2D games 
um, do it. And yeah, I, I'll be fun to see how we can see you like you can see the different kinds of combat and puzzles because the Oracle games are well known for having one of them being combat wise, the other one being um, puzzle wise, and it would be interesting to see how this game handles these two main elements and as well as the other things that are shown in the game. For number two is the Minish Cap. Now, with the Minish Cap, the design-wise, it kind of looks like, I, I think, uh, if you put 2Link into a 2D game, and it'd be cool to see the Minish Cap go full-on um, cell-shaded. It would go the way of the Wind Wake of HD, let's say. And instead of just having, you know, a 2D in 3D kind of element, it could go go all out in 3D, and we can just see how this could affect it, affect the game. Um, it could go either good or bad because it could go it could go well because um, it it'll, it'll look like the Wind Waker and it'll probably have some similar gameplay of the Wind Waker, but it could go bad because it's more of a, the Minish Cap is more of a 2D um, sort of game than it is a 3D game. But I I would say it kind of like how the the Minish, no, no, not the Minish Cap, Link's Awakening did it in terms of it could go somewhere in the middle, like have 3D models but do it in 2D space, that sort of thing. Um, but I wouldn't mind having one of each or somewhere in the middle. And for number one is Spirit Tracks. Now, Spirit Tracks, the only thing they could do um, in terms of improving the gameplay or graphics wise or something is probably just just roughing out the edges because that game was made as well as um, Phantom Hourglass were made for the DS so the, and the 3DS or oh, oh, well, the DS and the Switch are very very different in terms of um, how much power each console can do where with the Switch that's more powerful in terms of how it can run its games than it is the DS because the DS is just is it, it can only do like it can do so much but the the switch can do a lot whole much better. So with spirit tracks I would say that um there could be some improvements like you know roughing out of some of the edges of the graphics, make it more H D kind of like how um the Wind Waker did it. Um uh, maybe um adding some like let's say some new side quests maybe, some new content, maybe some new tracks to, to go to a challenge area that kind of thing, and yeah, it'll be something. It'll be it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how if Spectrex does get a sort of remake. And when it comes to the maps or the screens, because the screen you would use if you're playing on the DS um, were more on the lower screen, and the map was more on the top screen. And I would say that when it comes to that kind of thing, we could have the map, let's say in the top left or right hand corners and it could be like just like you know it could be there it could be visible and you can and you can see where all the trains are or all the demon trains the phantoms that kind of thing where you need to go um and and but the main gameplay area would be the main focus and you can just switch between the you controlling link and the map maybe i'm not 100 percent sure um but that's how i i feel like, i feel like i would do it if i was making a Spirit Tracks remake for the Switch or something like that. So yeah, that's been my top 5 um, Zelda games that should get to remake. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.